I sensed the noise throughout my body instead of through my ears. At the same time, I felt a pain I'd never experienced before. A moment later, the pain pulsated with my heartbeat. Ouch. I clenched my teeth. I felt like my teeth were cracking. I tightly shut my eyes until my eyeballs got squeezed up. The pain wouldn't fade. Rather, it swelled with my blood pressure. I felt as though it was bloating like a balloon. Timidly, I opened my eyes. I found that my little finger wasn't really drenched in blood. It was bleeding, but not much. Certainly not enough to explain how much it hurt. My fingernail was open just like the hood of a car. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was overwhelming. It occurred to me that I'd only done one out of three. Did I have to repeat this two more times? Did I have to remove the nails from my ring and middle fingers as well? I looked at the hag and at Meon begging for mercy. But they were just silently staring at me, as if the show had only just begun. Ooh, uh, I, I don't know about this. I don't like this. <laughs> I saw no hint of mercy in their eyes. They wouldn't be changing their minds. Since they said three, it had to be three. They wouldn't forgive me until I removed two more fingernails. Mion answered, still wearing a cold look. She didn't mean that it was insufficient. What she meant is that the others would have to take the remaining punishment if I didn't. I knew that. I really did know. Is it? I quickly moved the metal, metal beak and set it on my ring finger. And smacked it with no hesitation. Instead of making it quick, maybe I was just rushing out of fear. I'd messed up. The torture tool had clipped just the tip of my fingernail. The pain, however, was equal. I couldn't believe I'd only chipped it. Did I have to do it again? Did I have to continue removing the nail from my ring finger? That much pain, again. Again? Shion. I couldn't bear it anymore. I started crying shamelessly. They didn't seem to hear my voice. It felt as though there was an invisible barrier between us. They showed no mercy. They were just here to witness this ritual. So rather than sympathetic, they looked amazed by my screw-up. Mion walked up to me and whispered to my crying face. Mion shook her head and signaled the subordinates. They came from behind me. They covered my head with something like a knit cap. It was a blindfold. One of them pinned me in a Nelson hold, restricting my movement. Yeah. 
I couldn't overpower the guy behind me. Then I felt something strange on my left hand. The other guy was doing something with the torture tool. He put the metal beak between my ring finger and its fingernail. My left hand was fixed in the restraint, so I couldn't put up much protest anyway. But even that left hand was pressed down by his rough palms until it hurt, robbing it of the freedom to even tremble. They had no hesitation. Ow. It was made very clear to me how merciless people could be. Robbed of my vision, all I could do was clench my teeth against the pain assailing me. If there was anything I was thankful for, it was that he was well practiced and had ripped off both of my fingernails cleanly. Pain and screaming might induce narcotic chemicals in the, grain, in the brain. While screaming, I started losing consciousness. Maybe you, you just should have let him go. You, you didn't have to say anything that you were the other sister. Because that, that sucked. I woke up. My memories were missing. I couldn't remember how I got back to my room. I held my head with both hands. My left hand was bandaged. The fingernails that had their nails removed had swollen like hot dogs. Or the fingers, anyway. I'd paid with those three fingernails for what I did. The hag had said something after the punishment, but I didn't remember any of it. I was taken to a hospital in Okinomiya. Yeah, she suffered a freak fingernail removal accident. The car shook on the way, adding extra pain on top of what I'd already felt. Somebody gave me some aspirin. They worked just like they said on TV. But they didn't last more than 10 minutes. I swallowed the pills without water. While I was spacing out in the waiting lounge, Kasai showed up. He probably came to check if I was alright. I would obviously wasn't. He must have understood that from my bandaged left arm dangling from my shoulder. Kasai, on the other hand, looked just fine. At least on the outside. I was relieved that my sacrifice had meant something. Kasai didn't say anything. I couldn't tell if he wanted to tell me something or not, because he looked so emotionless. Kasai? <laughs> he paused shortly before answering. I could tell he was upset. I didn't regret revealing my true identity in order to protect Satoshi-kun. But I hadn't wanted Kisai or Uncle Yoshiro to be hurt. I'd been contradicting myself. Yoshiro <laughs> I wanted to ask him about Satoshi-kun too. I wondered if he was captured or harassed by the Sonazaki family because of me. But I was hesitant to ask Kasai. After all, I'd chosen Satoshi-kun over them. Was Satoshi-kun alright? I'd hoped he wouldn't get caught or incarcerated somewhere. I paid the hospital bill. And Kasai gave me a ride home. I finally realized that somebody was knocking on my door. It was Kasai. He put some side dishes on the table, and we started nibbling at them. Oh, 
この数日間は食事はされていましたか冷蔵庫の中の残り物を適当に食べてましたあとは天井を見てるか眠っているかのどっちか It had been three days. I just been laying down since then. I woke up every now and then in, in my shallow sleep, but I didn't feel like getting up or thinking. I just felt like I'd been floating the whole time. My appetite was gone, but it came back with the smell of the food Kasai had brought. I wasn't able to think of anything to talk to Kasai about, so I just ate silently. 昨日、ミオンさんから連絡がありました。シオンさんの部屋に何度か電話したけど、出なかったからということで。The moment I'd heard Mion's name, I felt my wounds throb. But I didn't stop Kasai, who continued. その先、本家としては、シオンさんがご自分でけじめをつけられたので、これで決着とするそうです。あの学園には退学届が出されます。シオンさんは沖ノ宮の学校に編入になるそうです。その崎シオンの人権が認められたってことか。そうですね。今後はその崎シオンとして生活してくださって構わないそうです。ですが、みだりにひなみざわには近づかないこと。その崎ミオンを語らないこと。人前にみだりに姿を現さないこと。他にも細々とありますが、つまるところ、存在を認めてやるから、本家に目立つようなことは二度とするなってわけか。そういうことになります。もちろん、永続的なわけじゃありません。ほとぼりが冷めるまで当分ということです。具体的にいつまでという期限があるわけではありませんが、今年いっぱいくらいは、これまで通り目立たない生活を送られた方がよろしいかと思います。私は沖ノ宮でひっそり暮らすだけで十分です。もともとこれまでだってそうして暮らしてきたわけだし。Kasai put on a sad smile.I smiled back at him likewise.Before the conversation ended, I should ask him what I wanted to know. サトシ君はどうなったの I wish that Kasai would assure me of his safety right away. But he didn't answer like that. Kasai, Satoshi kun wa. Buji. Shion san. Kasai put his chopsticks down. Honke kara. Hojo Satoshi kun wa. I'm sure they do, but, but we don't want to. Kasai put his chopsticks down. Nani sore? Shion san. Anata to kenka wa shita kun nain de. これ以上この話はしたくありません。本家からの言葉を伝えるのみにとどめさせてもらいます。な、何その話をしたくないってのは。カサイ。カサイ pretended as though he didn't hear me and started eating again. I'd never seen him get so stubborn like this. The Sonozaki family had been using the Hojo family as a scapegoat. They must have concluded that a Sonozaki shouldn't be in love with a Hojo. I didn't like that. Satoko is a friend of Mion's at school. Would it be okay if Satoshi kun and I were the same gender? Anyway, if I did something conspicuous again, they might do something to him for real. Just like they forced me to remove my own fingernails. The Sonozaki family wouldn't hesitate. They'd torture him if need be. Maybe if I really loved him, I should stay away. Satoshi kun won't show up in Okinomiya unless he rejoins the Hinamizawa fighters. I'd have to pretend to be Mion if I wanted to go to Hinamizawa. But I didn't think she'd cooperate with me. Even if she did, It'd be some time down the road. Even if they told me not to see him, I'd already had no means of doing that again. Oh, wait. Mion gave me his number a little while ago. I could call him and maybe ask to meet with him secretly. 
But if I got caught again, they wouldn't cut me any slack. Should I risk it? What the heck did I even want from Satoshi-kun? Kasai? Just... Kasai started putting away his food in a rush, assuming that I wanted him to leave. あ、いいの。傘は伸びり食べてて。私がちょっと一人で散歩がしたいだけなの。私もシオンさんと一緒に出ないとこの部屋に鍵がかけられません。Kasai quickly put away his meal and followed me out. Ah, I turned around and started walking. And ran right into him. No, my destination was rather pathetic. It was the toy store that sold that giant teddy bear. I couldn't deny that I was somewhat expecting Satoshi-kun to pass by there. I couldn't stop myself from looking at the faces of passerby who resembled him. I looked into the store's window. The teddy bear was gone. Satoshi-kun, His evil aunt had died, and his wicked uncle was living with his mistress. Satoshi-kun succeeded in fulfilling his duty as a big brother by buying his little sister that huge teddy bear. There was nobody left to hurt him. He was free from his tiresome efforts. He was completely free from pain. Over time, he'd retrieve his smile, and he'd go back to being the Satoshi-kun I love. But... I wouldn't be there with him. I heard a car honking. I didn't think it was honking at me at first, but it was so persistent that I had to look up. The person waving at me from their car was Irie. He was waving at me all carefree, oblivious to my feelings. いえ、そういうわけじゃないです。そのおもちゃ屋さんのショーウィンドウは、サトシ君もよく覗いていましたからね。それでてっきり、サトシ君との待ち合わせか何かかなって思っちゃいまして。いえ、たまたまここを通り
訳ありで今までずっとミオンのふりしてきましたええ双子の妹さんですか He was totally taken aback. I burst into laughter again. So, this is the one who 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 is the o Suddenly, a loud voice interrupted us. The voice sounded mean and greasy, unlike Eerie's. It was him. Oishi. Gross. They were just going through the motions. It was obvious that they hated each other. Eerie whispered to me. Eerie figured that Oishi was after me, so he was giving me a chance to slip away. Looking at Oishi's face, it was clear that his focus was on me, not Eerie. He probably intended to interrogate me until my testimony broke. I was sure I could talk my way out of it, but it'd just be a waste of time. So, this is it. So, I'm going to go to the hospital. 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 I'm going to go to the h o s p Eerie bowed. I followed suit. I had to admire how good he was at lying. He's a grown up after all. Oishi seemed to know it was a lie. But he didn't have a warrant, so he couldn't stop us. I moved to get into Eerie's car. Oh Oh my god, how did he know I was injured even though my hand is bandaged up? I gasped when I heard that. My left hand was bandaged. It was unsightly, so I'd kept it in my pocket. There was no way Oishi could have been able to see it. <laughs> Oishi scratched his head and chuckled. He's supposed to be one of the best cops at Okinomiya PD, and he knows all about the underground activities in the region. He must have heard about my payment from somewhere. Still, that happened in the secret basement of the Sonozaki main house. I couldn't underestimate this guy's sources. お見舞い、感謝感激です。じゃあ、もう行きますね。失礼します。その崎シオンさん、私とコーヒーでも。Oh, I'd love to, but I, I, I just hate you a little bit too much. はあ、何それ、私を口説いてんですか。そういうことでもいいですよ。<笑>遠慮します。一日は有限。わざわざ退屈なことに費やすなんてバカげてますから。ああ、もうまいったな。じゃあこうしましょう。私とのおしゃべりが退屈になったらいつでも途中で帰っていいです。引き止めません。そういう約束でどうです。あんたがしゃべ
he was being strangely persistent. It didn't look like he was trying to poke a hole in my statement. What would he even talk about? I got a bit curious, even though I was still skeptical. Oh, no. I winked at him and told him not to worry. Irie didn't insist. He got in his car and drove off. Oishi backed his car up so I could get in. I hopped in the back seat, since I didn't want to sit next to him. Oishi carefully checked for oncoming cars, and then started driving. <laughs> 